Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous sessions we have discussed about the functional dependencies and uh, the types of functional dependencies and the properties of uh, functional dependencies. So in this session we will go with a one more concept in DBMS that is how to find the closure of an attribute. So our table will be having a number of attributes and uh, we'll be, uh, we have discussed about the functional dependencies and with the help of those things, how to find the closure, right? So because this closure is used to identify the super keys and the candidate keys, right? So the closure of an attribute is a set of attributes set of attributes that are functionally determined by the attribute set right so it is a set of attributes. So we can apply this closure on a single attribute or attribute set. Attribute set. That means multiple attributes. And this one, this closure is represented, represented as plus symbol as C. If, if we want to find X, the closure of X, so closure of X, then it will be represented as X plus, X plus is equal to, so set of attributes, the attribute set, right? So this is the closure so which are functionally determined by the attribute set functionally determined by the attribute set so we'll see one example so that uh, it will be understood very clearly right so let's have an example so let us take this uh, example so let's have a relation with the following attributes a b c d e and the functional dependencies are a tends to b b tends to c c tends to d and d tends to a so we have discussed about this functional dependency concept, how it is represented and everything. So I'll post the link in the description section. So just go through about that. So here A tends to B means B is a functionally dependent on A. So by knowing A, we can get the details of B. Okay. So if you want to, so from this one, we can find out the closures, the different closures, right? So it can be a single attribute or a multiple attributes. So for example, if you want to find a plus the closure of a plus the closure of a plus so that means see for every attribute for every attribute closure the same thing will be determined okay so that means see if you know a we can get the attribute a right so for every attribute set for which we are finding the closure, the same attributes will be available in the resultant set. Okay, same uh, attributes can be included in the resultant set. So this is the resultant set. Okay, so here we are not, we are, we are supposed to find the uh, closure of A plus. So the first one will be the A. Okay, by knowing A, we can get the details of A. So for example, if a, if, if a table consists of some employee ID and employee number or employee name employee name so with the help of employee ID so definitely we can get the details of employee ID and employee name employee ID and employee name so 
similarly if you know this one so the self attribute can be added into the resultant set so a plus the first one will be the attributes for which we are uh, finding the closure right so a and now in the resultant set so this is a resultant set this is the resultant set so we know a okay we are having the attribute a so by using a what are the other attributes we can determine from the functional dependency so we are having a so we can know b we can get the details of b right so b can be determined if you are having a now the resultant set is having a and b so we are having the details of attributes a and b so what are other attributes we can get so if you are having attribute b we can also get c right so the meaning of this functional dependency means if you know this attribute we can determine this attribute okay so c is functionally dependent on b so we have we know b so obviously we can get a c so we can get c now the resultant set is having three attributes a b c so by knowing a or b or c or a combination of a b or a c or b c so we can get more number of attributes what are the other attributes so if you know c we can also get a d yes and now the resultant set is having a four attributes so again we have to check what are the other attributes we can determine with the help of all those four attributes so we are having d we can get a so a is already there so this is the closure of a attribute a so for example if you want to get the closure of b d so the first one is whatever the attributes for which we are finding the closure that should be added in the resultant set so d will be the first one okay so if you are having the value of d we can get the value of d itself so that will be the self okay self insertion now in our resultant set we are having the value of d from the functional dependencies by having d what are the other attributes we are, we can get so if you know d we can get the attributes a we can get the a so a now our resultant set is having both d and a so if you are having a we can get a b we can determine the value of b and see now the resultant set we are having the three d a b so we are having a we can get a b so already there we we are having b so we can get the c value c now the resultant set we are having a four attributes a d a b and c so d we can get a so already there next a we can get a b already there b we can get a c already there c we can get a d already there so this is the closure of d plus d plus and here you can see e now let us find the closure of e plus e plus so the first first uh, attribute we can get in the resultant resultant set is the self attribute so e now the resultant set we are having e so from the functional dependencies if you know the value of e what are the other attributes we can get so there is no functional dependency with the attribute e right so you need to find here so there is no attribute e so that will be the single attribute in the resultant set that's a single attribute in the resultant set and also you can get the details of b and c so we can get a b and c the closure of bc okay bc so the first attributes are the self attribute so we can get a values of b comma c now the resultant set we are having b and c if you know b we can get a c already there if you are knowing c we can get a d so d and now our resultant set we are having a b c d b c and d three attributes if you know d we can get a a from the functional dependencies so a so this is the closure of b c plus right so hope you understood so this the meaning of this functional dependency means if you know the value of a we can determine the value of b so that's why we call b is a functionally dependent on a so here the 
closure is a set of attributes that are functionally determined by the attribute set. So, what are the attributes we can determine by using these particular attributes is the resultant set. Right? So, hope you understood this one. This is one example. Let us move on with the second example. So, let us take the second example. So, these are the attributes of a given relation R. And the functional dependencies are this one. A tends to BC, BC tends to DE, D tends to F, and CF tends to G. So, this implies, if you know A, we can get the values of B and C. So, simply you can write it. A, if you know A, we can determine B. If you know A, we can determine C. So, we can divide this one. And coming to this one. So, if you know both the values of B and C, then only you can determine DE. So, we should not divide the left hand side portion. That means a determinant. Okay, we should not divide the determinant. So, determinant means only with the combination of B and C, we can determine DE. So, this can be decomposed as BC, if you know B and C values, we can get a D value or if you know B and C values, we can get a E value. So, you should not divide the determinants, right? So, DE can be determined only with the help of combination of B and C. Okay, if you are having only B, we can't determine DE. If you are having only C, we can't determine DE. And similarly, DF. And this is also same, CF. So, with the combination of C and F, we can determine G. So, we should not divide this one. So, just remember this one, right? Now, we can find the closures. Let us find the closure of A+. plus. Let us find the closure of A+. plus. The first one will be the self. A. So, this will be the resultant set. Resultant set. So, A. Now, the resultant set, we are having A. So, with the help of A, we are having A. So, what are the other attributes we can determine with the help of A from the functional dependencies? So, if you are having A, we can determine either B or C. So, we can determine either B or C. Any other? Yes. Right. Now, the resultant set, we are having A, B and C. In the resultant set, we are having A, B and C. Now, see, second functional dependency. If you are having B and C, we can determine DE. So, we are having BC. Okay, we have we are having B and C. So, we can determine D or E. So, now we are having the resultant set 5 attributes A, B, C, D, E. Now, from this third one, if you know D, we can determine F. Yes. F. And the next one, if you know C and F, we can determine G. So, in the resultant set, we are having C and F. So, we can determine G. So, this will be the closure of A. The closure of A. And see, the next one, let us take closure of D. Closure of D. So, here you can observe, the first one will be the self, that is a D. And now the resultant set, we are having the value of D. So, with the help of D, we can determine the value of F. So, D comma F. Okay, D comma F. Now, in the resultant set, we are having D and F. Both the D and F. So, you can observe, here we can determine G only with the combination of C and F. So, but in the resultant set, we are having only F. There is no C. So, we can't determine G value. Okay. So, any other uh, attributes which can determine with the help of D or F? No. So, this will be the closure of D plus. Because, here you can observe with the, with the help of D we can determine F and with the help of C and F we can determine G. So only the two things and you can also take the multiple attributes closure. See B, C, D plus that means a closure of B, C and D. The closure of B, C and D. So, the self, that means the first characters, the, the first attributes are the B, C and D. Now, in our closure, in our resultant set, we are having a B, C and D. So, if you know B, what are the other attributes? So, from the second functional dependency, if you know B and C, we can get a D and E. So, we are having B and C in the resultant set. 
So we can get a D and E. Already D is available here. So include E. Include E. Now in the resultant set we are having B, C, D, E. Now, so we if you from the third functional dependency, if you know D, we can get a F. So we also get F here. And coming to the last one, so if you know C and F, we can determine G. So here we are having C and F. We can determine G. We can determine G. So any other uh, attributes we can determine. So B, C, we can get a D, E, and D, we can get a F, C, F, we can get a G. Right? So this is the closure of a B, C, D plus. Right? So hope you understood this one. Right? So this is the closure. This is a closure we can find from the given functional dependency. Right? And what is the purpose of finding this closure? So finding this closure will can determine the number of super keys and the number of uh, candidate keys available in the given relation. Right? So we can find out what are the super keys and what are the candidate keys available in the given relation with the help of these closures. Right? So uh, hope you understood this closure. Let's stop here. In the next session, we'll see uh, more details about that closure. So what is the purpose? That means finding the super keys and the candidate keys from the closures by using these closures. Right? So let's stop here. Hope you understood this one. And if you are having any doubts regarding the calculation of this closure, so feel free to post your doubts in the comment section. Definitely I will try to clarify all your doubts. If you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.